Come on, Google Meet, whatever. Okay, so Content Center is where we can we can actually bring in tons of hardware. And I want to talk about what's inside this assembly. The clamp is not, and the base is not in this assembly. It's like an external reference inside the assembly. The assembly knows what's inside, and it goes and brings, it goes and builds those or shows those parts in the assembly. What's really in the assembly are the constraints only. So if you sent me a .iam file without the parts, it wouldn't open. It says, hey, I don't know where the parts are to bring them into the assembly. They're not inside here. It's just like an external reference that it has to go and grab. Like if you had an AutoCAD drawing with, a, with an Excel spreadsheet in it, if you don't have that Excel spreadsheet, it won't bring it into the drawing, right? All right. So Content Center is much the same. And I want to show you, we have to place something from Content Center. We're going to put a bolt in here. And I don't even have to know what this thread is. It's going to find it for me. And I'm going to make a two inch long bolt and I don't have to build it. So let's place from content center. So every time I open this assembly with something in here from content center, it actually builds that part. So let me go into content center and I'm going to show you what all we've got. We have cable and harness pieces, connectors, discrete wire and ribbon cable. We have fasteners, which are bolts, nuts, pins, rivets, and washers. And if you expand the bolts, you've got countersink, hex head, flange, hex head, um, eyelets, uh, round head, set screws, socket head, all studs, all kinds of stuff. And if you expand that, you're going to get even more different types. We have nuts, cap nuts, hex nuts, king slotted nuts, wing nuts, pins, clevis pins, cotter pins, grooved pins, and all kinds of clevis pins. Rivets, washers, ball washers, plain washers, spring washers, tapers, you can even bring in all kinds of features from Content Center to use in your part or in your assembly. And then we have injection mold features, injector components, cooling components, accessories, guides, inserts, lifters, mold plates, return components, runners, slides, what about other parts, drill bushings, grease fittings, pin, you know, zerk fittings, seal rings, shaft parts, bearings, circlips, collars. So it has all the information for tons of sizes in here, you guys. You don't have to go and download um, some part from McMaster Car or whatnot, Granger, sheet metal, pin nuts, blind nuts. Um, cable management, uh, sticky kind of plastic features, studs pressed into the sheet metal, structural shapes such as angles, channels, beams, round bars, Z's and T's, tube and pipe, conduit, and fittings. Look at all the fittings that you have. And so there's tons and tons and tons of things in here. And I'm going to show you how it makes it. So we're going to go to bolts. And we're just going to go to a hex head bolt. Inside that are these different types. But look at all these kinds of hex head bolts. And a lot of these are codes for certain kinds of, of bolts. We're going to just go to a hex head. And thank goodness that these are just in alphabetical order, hex bolt inch. Now, if I just set it down, it's going to ask me, what's the major diameter of the thread? And that's usually what's called out. 
on our thread whenever we put a hole in. How long is it? And that's from the bottom side of the head. And is it coarse or fine thread? If you go to the table view, looks like it's having some problem with that. Then what it shows you are all the dimensions, normally shows you all the dimensions to make a bolt. So what, and I don't know why it's hung up right here, but what it does is it, it works on an Excel spreadsheet and it says, okay, she needs this thread, um, this size, this many threads in an inch, this long, this size head, you know, this type of head, this size. And then it takes all that information and it builds the actual bolt. So instead of doing that, instead of me having to specify what size everything is, I want it to pick up these threads. And at first it's saying select the circular hole edge. So if I select that and click on it, it just picked up the thread of 1 half 13 UNC 2B. And the only other thing it needs to know is how long is it? So if I drag this, you see this number changing from 1 to 1.25 to 1.5, 1.75, 2 inches, and I drop it, and it will build at that size. Now, if you select that circular edge, it is inserted, and it can't come off that face, so I can't put my pipe in there. And I want this to be offset from this top face. So I'm going to delete this. And if I place from content center, it keeps that one highlighted. So if I click, double click on this one, it says select a circular head edge, but there is another option. Go down and select the cylinder. It kept the same size remembering that, but it, it knows what to align it with. So it could be on the top, it could be on the bottom. So select the face. It's already at two inches. If I drag this up and down, I can see that that's at two inches. <laughs> and then we're going to, we can change the size right here or we can just finish it. So now if I, I can spin this and it's stuck, but you know, bolts are meant to spin. I'm not going to lock that down fully. I'm going to go down here underneath this hex bolt and expand it. And it has two constraints. It has a mate of the axis and a mate of those faces. And if I click this, I can put an offset of like one inch. And it gives it enough room to get that round piece of pipe in here. And usually this would be threaded all the way and probably fine thread because it has a lot more holding power. But I have this moved out so that I can get that thing in there. Now, if I wanted to lock this head down and if you insert something, there is a lock icon that you can lock it down where it won't spin. But I could also use... And this is when I use a parallel constraint with a directed angle. I use this to this and make it zero degrees and say, okay. And now it won't move because that's always got to be parallel. So if I want to lock something down from rotating, that's another reason to use an angle. You don't have to lock it down. You can take that off. It doesn't matter to me if it spins. And so now we have our assembly with all three parts and we're gonna save this and we're gonna use this. Now I've edited the V clamp and I've edited the base and I've, and I've made some assembly changes. So when it says, do you want to do this? It says yes to all of them. You don't have to click yes to off. It says yes. 
or you can say yes to off it doesn't and say okay and it will save the parts that you've changed inside the assembly to the updated parts so since i've turned the the visibility of that plane off in this part if i right click and open it this one doesn't have i want this one to not show that plane or i could delete it so I'm just going to take off visibility and save this part. Now when I go back to this, everything looks good and our assembly is finished. So we have a little bit more time. We have, what, 10 more minutes. And I want to show you guys an an exploded view file and you're going to have to make one to show how these parts go together although it's pretty self-explanatory <laughs> 